Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Rap Church Daily Ministry. I am your vessel for the Word of God today. My name over here, that does not matter whatsoever. Today, we are here to bring honor and glory and praise to the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I hope you've been having a great morning. I look forward to the word and the message that the Lord has put in my heart. I am eager to share this with you guys. And once again, this is going to be a message that I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit convicts your heart and He challenges you and that um, we can get outside our convenience and our comfort as members of the body of Christ, that we would truly challenge ourselves to walk in the things that Jesus said that we would walk in. He said that we would do the same works and even greater works, but do you believe that by faith? Guys, it takes faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So here I am as a messenger delivering this word that was put on my heart and I'm just hoping that this opens eyes and once again that it um, it challenges you to get out of your comfort and your convenience, any lukewarmness, any um, religious spirit that you might be operating out of um, for all of us that we would truly and genuinely enter into a relationship with the living God as he um, designed us to do. We were made and designed to praise the Lord, to worship the Lord, to glorify the Lord and be in fellowship with him by his Holy Spirit. So guys, I am just, I'm very excited to share this word with you guys, but this is another very challenging word and I hope that you receive it with glad hearts and that it lands on good soil and that you do not let the devil snatch up the seed and that it gets planted, it grows deep roots and then it multiplies. So here we are. I am gonna read you two scriptures today. And the first one is coming out of um, Luke 13 and then we're gonna go to John 15. But guys, today we're talking about bearing fruit this could be a message for about, I could do about six segments on this, the, the importance of bearing fruit. And Jesus talks about it. We're talking about the words of Jesus. These words that I'm bringing you, these parables that I'm bringing you, these examples I'm bringing you are coming straight out of the Lord and Savior's mouth. So I just hope that your ears are open, your heart is open, and that your mind is open to receive what the Lord is trying to speak to us today. So um, we're going to talk about the importance of bearing fruit and what it looks like to bear fruit in the eyes of Jesus. So honestly, I'm just gonna dive right into it today. Um, so we're gonna talk about the parable of the barren fig tree. Guys, I need you, I need you guys to hear this. Um, so this is the words of Jesus Christ. This is what the word of God says. We're gonna read uh, from chapter 13 of Luke, um, verses six through nine. Here we go. Then Jesus told this story. So right before he told this story, the last thing he said is, no, and I tell you again that unless you repent, you will perish too. So what are we talking about? We're talking about repentance again. And we're talking about if you do not repent, if you do not turn from your sins, if you do not turn to God, you will perish too. It doesn't matter if you said a prayer or if you've been walking with the Lord for two years straight. Once you decide that, hey, I am just not going to challenge myself anymore. I am just going to go through the motions and I'm just going to check off boxes and I'm just going to warm up chairs on Sunday. Um, that is not the Christian life. That is not the life of a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. Every single day we should be challenging ourselves. Every single day we should be getting outside of our comfort zone. Every single day we should be trying to bear fruit, the fruits of the spirit, but also the fruit of salvation, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of the faith, all these things. And also for fruit is sharing your faith when's the last time you actually actually genuinely shared your faith and shared your testimony when's the last time that you invited someone to church when's the last time that you got tried to get someone water baptized when's the last time you invited someone with the invitation that jesus christ is offering graciously as the gift of salvation when's the last time you stepped outside and tried to save a soul guys that is fruit you're bearing fruit when you bring people into the kingdom but you're also bearing fruit when you're operating out of love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control walking in righteousness holiness and purity all these things are the fruit of salvation um not just saying a prayer and then sitting back and doing nothing and not bearing any fruit for those who have not been deeply rooted in the word i want you guys to hear what jesus see how our father in heaven and jesus see those who do not bear fruit okay this is what it says then jesus told the story a man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it but he was always disappointed finally he said to his gardener i've waited three years and there hasn't been a single free a fig a single fig cut it down 
It's just taking up space in the garden. Guys, let me say that again. He said, finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. I am here to challenge you guys. Are you just in the garden taking up space? Are you just in the body of Christ taking up space? Are you this fig tree that hasn't bared any uh, any fruit in three years and then the gardener keeps checking on you he, god keeps looking down on you and he sees you you're in his garden you were part of it and he's looking down he's like dang it's been three years and this fig hasn't even produced anything chop it down i've had enough of it because it's only taking up space in the garden guys when we get the chance to inherit the garden of eden when we actually get the opportunity to eat from the tree of life why would God want any um, thing that's in his garden that just takes up space and doesn't produce fruit? He says, I'm going to chop it down. Wow. And he, once again, I'm, this might be for someone specifically when he says, I've waited three years. So maybe the last three years of your life, you've got away from your faith. You've started to turn your back on God. You haven't produced any fruit. You haven't shared your faith. You haven't shared your testimony. I just don't want you to be this fig tree that God is talking about in this parable that Jesus is explaining to us, that you, he keeps coming back every single day to check on his, his fig tree that's in the garden. You're in the garden right now. But guys, it does not give you the right to just take up space in the garden. He says, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. There's not been fruit on this tree for three years. Cut it down. That's what God is. He's looking at all of us in his garden. He's looking at all of us in the body. He's like, wow. You have not bared any fruit in the last three years. You're taking up space in my garden. If something doesn't give, if something doesn't change, if you don't start to produce fruit, you will be cut down. You'll be thrown out of the garden and you will be thrown into the fire. Guys, and I don't want that for anybody. I don't want that for any of the believers, especially guys. Like, I don't want anyone to perish and neither does God. But I don't want you to think that you're in the garden safe and sound and then God cuts you down and he throws you out of the garden. I don't want that for anybody. So please challenge yourself to start bearing fruit, sharing your testimony, sharing the gospel, walking in the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, the fruit of salvation, the fruit of righteousness. Please, I'm begging you, don't just take up space in the garden. And then this is what the gardener said, okay? This is what the gardener said. Sir, give it one more chance, leave it another year, and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. So in, the, in this example, Jesus is the gardener, the man who planted the fig tree, the man whose garden it is, is our father in heaven. But Jesus said, give it one more chance because he's interceding on our behalf. He is up there next to the throne of heaven. And when we fall and when we sin, he intercedes on our, our behalf and he gives us a better testimony and his blood is, is, does cover us. But even God is looking at, he's like, okay, Jesus. And Jesus looks at God, our father. He says, sir, give this fig tree one more chance. Leave it one more year and I'll give it special attention and plenty fertilizer. So Jesus is after someone right now. He's trying to give you special attention. He's trying to give you special fertilizer so you can bear fruit, so you can go, go out into the world and be fruitful and reflect the glory of God, reflect the character of Jesus Christ. But even Jesus says, because he has to answer to his father just like we all do. All glory to Father God. It says, if we get figs next year, this was an if, this is an if statement, if then. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then you can cut it down. Guys, even Jesus, after all the special attention that he gives, after all the fertilizer that he gives, after all the care he gives for you, after all the sacrifices that he's made for you, after all the time that he's intervened for you, after all the times he's opened doors for you, after all the times that he broke through and pulled you off that path that you were walking down, walking down after all the times that he's literally pulled you from the darkness in the marvelous light after all the times that he tried to shift your desires guys eventually he's going to look at his father in heaven and he's going to say he's going to look at our god and he's going to say if it doesn't get figs by next year this fig tree you can cut it down and toss it out so guys i am just begging you do not be one of the fig trees in the garden right now especially because Jesus has given us special attention. He's given us extra water, extra fertilizer. He's our father in heaven's pruning us guys. And we're going to get into that in John 15, but please, I don't want, maybe it's been a couple years from you and you really haven't 
been walking in the faith like you you wanted to guys i'm just i'm just begging you that do not take it for granted that you're in the garden don't have god say this about you when he looks at my when i look at the fig tree i'm always disappointed don't don't be that fig tree and then god says to his gardener i've waited so long i've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig cut it down Jesus will intercede on your behalf. Jesus will do whatever it takes. He'll give you special treatment. But eventually, even Jesus says, all right, Father God, this, this tree in the garden, it just, it just hasn't been bearing any fruits. It's been three years now. Even after I gave it special attention and special treatment, it's still not bearing, bearing any fruit. You can chop it down. And, I, and I, he just accepts it. And I don't want that for anybody. I don't want you to just to take up space and then for God to say, this tree it's not bearing fruit. It's useless. It just is taking up room. I want to be able to bring in trees that are bearing good fruit and multiplying, guys. So I'm just praying against uh, any complacency, um, any comfort, and any um, lacking of the bearing of fruit. And I'm just praying that the Lord would supernaturally give you that special attention, that special fertilizer that would help you to grow and help you to mature and help you to bear fruit in Jesus' name. Okay. So, we're, so remember what we just talked about. Now we're going to go to John 15. And these, honestly, these two scriptures basically are hand in hand with each other. So I need you to hear um, what Jesus says. Okay. So in John 15, we're going to go verses 1 through um, 8. Okay. So this is what the Word of God says. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. Guys, what are we talking about? God said that he cuts off any branch that doesn't produce fruit. Any, any of the, the branches that are connected to the true vine of Jesus Christ, if it doesn't bear fruit, it will be chopped down. It will be cut off, disconnected from Christ for all time, thrown into the fire. And he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more fruit. If anyone knows pruning, the process of pruning, it is definitely painful and it can be, um, once again, very inconvenient and be, be very uncomfortable. But in the long run, God loves you so much and he's so gracious and he wants to see you grow and mature and to come into the fullness that the pruning process is actually going to help you to bear more fruit, even if it hurts. So praise the Lord for that. He wants us to bear even more fruit. He wants us to bear much fruit. So Jesus goes on to say, You have already been pruned and purified by the message I have given you. Praise the Lord for the word of God and the gospel. Remain in me and I will remain in you. I need you guys to get that. Listen to that word right there. In some translation it says abide. But in here it says remain in me and I will remain in you. So this is a process. You've got to remain. You've got to keep fighting for it. You've got to keep abiding in Christ. You can't just go through the motions once again and just for three years get stagnant never read the word never pray never go to church but you said a prayer and you think that that's going to give you eternal salvation no if you're not bearing fruit you will be cut off from the garden if you're not bearing any figs as a fig tree you are useless in the sight of god if you are not bearing any producing any fruit connected to the true vine you will be a branch that gets cut off but if you bear fruit, you will be pruned and you will bear more fruit. Praise the Lord for that. But you have to remain. It's a fight. Fight the good fight of faith. Remain in Jesus Christ and he will remain in you. Once again, every day coming to him, just give me grace. Give me mercy. I want to be in a deeper relationship with you. I want to know you. I want to come to the full knowledge. Grant me with more knowledge, wisdom, understanding, revelation. I want to be able to love you with all my heart, mind, soul, spirit. All of it. My whole being honors you, God. And I want to be able to love others. I want to be able to walk like you. I want to be able to reciprocate your divine nature all these things you got to remain 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 if, there, if you don't get anything from this message just please remain in christ whatever that looks like to you i just pray that you would keep going back to jesus keep asking jesus for help keep asking jesus for his counsel to be able to lead you guide you and direct you into his promises but you have to remain in him so he can remain in you for a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me, Jesus said. Wow. So we have to remain in Jesus. We have to be connected to Jesus. If we are not, we can produce no fruit, and we will be severed from the vine. We can only be fruitful if we remain in Jesus Christ. He goes on to say, Yes, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. 
separated from the true vine, separated from the pruning of God our Father, we can do nothing. We cannot bear any fruit. Our life has no meaning. We have no purpose. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Guys, what did we just talk about in Luke 13? You, Jesus, literally the gardener trying to give you special attention, trying to make sure that he gives you the special treatment that you need so you can be a tree in the garden that can bear fruit so God does not come back every single day and feel sad and just, he's like, ah, oh, this tree, it's just not bearing any fruit. Every day he comes back and he's just filled with sorrow. He's just like, he's just like, this tree is useless to me. I'm going to chop it down and take it out the garden. And what does Jesus say right here? He literally says the same thing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Same thing in the parable in Luke 13. Any fig tree that's not producing figs will be thrown out of the garden. Guys, don't let Jesus come back every single day. Don't let Father God look at you every single day and just be filled with um, almost a, like a righteous anger knowing that he rescued you and he's grafted us into his garden. He's brought you into the garden, but just because you're in the garden doesn't mean you're safe because if you're not bearing fruit, you will be chopped down. You will be seen as useless and you will wither and you will be thrown away. It goes on to say, such branches are gathered into a pile and burned. Guys, I'm just begging you, please do not be one of these branches. Please do not be one of the trees that doesn't bear fruit. You'll be removed from the garden or in the in this kind of parable, um, you will be a branch that gets gathered into a pile and burned because you are useless and you are withering and you're thrown away because you're not bearing fruit and you're not connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ, and you're not being pruned by God the Father. But here's the good news. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted to you. So you've got to be feasting on Jesus Christ. You've got to be feasting on his word. He is the word made flesh. He is the word of God. That is another name for Jesus Christ. Feast on Christ. He That was a command that he gave us. Feast on his flesh and drink his blood and remain in him and abide in him. And that's when you will be granted anything you request and you'll be fruitful. It says, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. You want to be a true disciple and a true follower of Christ? Jesus said, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. So guys, I am just here. I'm just begging you. Don't be a, a branch that is connected to Christ that's not bearing fruit. Do not be a fig tree in the garden of God and not produce any figs. Guys, it is, it's not good news for anyone who sits in the garden or is connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. You are a branch that is useless and will be thrown out and put into a pile and burned if you decide that you're not going to be fruitful. You're not, it literally says, you, you show that you're my true disciples by bearing fruit. You, des, you show that you deserve to be in the garden if you're a fig tree that produces figs. If not, why, I looked these last three years, Father God says, I look at this fig tree and it's doing absolutely nothing. So why it's just taking up space and it's just literally, it's useless. Why, why would I want this thing in my garden? But Jesus is interceding on your behalf, guys. He's fighting for you. It literally said that he's giving you special attention. He literally says, Jesus, like, give him one more chance, Father God. Leave it one more year and I'll give a special attention attention and plenty of fertilizers. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, you can cut it down. So eventually, Jesus is just like, yeah, you're just in the garden taking up room. You're not being fruitful. Um, you're just taking up space in the garden. And God is looking at at his garden, he's looking at all the fig trees and those that aren't bearing fruit. He's like, I am so disappointed. That is what the word of God says. He was always disappointed when he came to the garden and saw that that fig tree in his garden was not producing figs. He's always disappointed when he sees the branches connected to Jesus Christ not bearing fruit because they're going to be chopped off. And be, if you're chopped off from Jesus Christ, you can be nothing. You're put into a pile and you are thrown into the fire, guys. I just I just, I'm begging you just to ask the Lord for grace to be able to produce fruit in this season. I love you guys. And I just want to be able to see you guys prospering and living the abundant life and being connected to the true vine and being fruitful and letting Father God prune you. Let and accepting the special attention and the special fertilizer and the special care that Jesus is trying to give to you so you can be a fig tree that produces fruit. So guys, I'm going to pray us out. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm just want I'm just gonna lift you guys up, and I'm just gonna lift us all up. So, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just thank you 
um, for your pruning. I just thank you that you've allowed us to come into your garden. I just thank you that you've allowed us to be connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. Father God, I'm asking for the grace for everyone under the sound of my voice, including myself, including my friends and my family and my coworkers. Allow us to be fig trees that produce many, many figs, which will make you proud of us and then make you um, not see us as useless and taking up space. Guys, I'm just, I just feel it so strong. Just whoever has been sitting in the garden, just like I said, for the last three years and you haven't produced any fruit, I'm just, I'm just pray, praying for a supernatural grace package and a supernatural fire and a supernatural um, ability to receive that special fertilizer and that special attention that Jesus is giving you. He's going to give it to you and it's going to awaken you and it's going to make you produce much fruit. So God, I'm just asking for us all to be connected in the true vine, Jesus Christ, and remain in the true vine and remain in the word and let Jesus fill us and let his words fill us so we can produce much fruit and receive the pruning that we can, uh, that we need to bear more fruit and to be worthy of the call and to be worthy to be in the garden and to be worthy to be the branches connected to Jesus Christ. So God, I'm just asking for the mercy and for your favor and for your grace and for your patience for all of those who have been having a, a lack of fruit bearing God. I'm just praying for a restoration. I'm praying for a renewal and a revival and a refreshing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I appreciate you guys. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. Peace out.